guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a anti-haul of products that I'm not going to be buying. Products in the makeup world that have recently been released and just don't tickle my pickle basically. This kind of video has been circling around a lot on YouTube recently and I don't know who originally started but whoever did, one, shout out to you because what a great idea and two, I don't know who it is to credit them. Got an itchy nose. If this is the first time seeing me on your screen then feel free to hit that subscribe button and also make sure that you do tap the bell down below so you are notified every single time I post a new video. But yeah, without further ado, I'm just gonna roll on to the video. I don't know how I'm gonna do this video because normally I do like chatty videos that either include like my phone or picking up products and hauling it or doing my makeup or whatever, but this is like kind of a sit down video. So I'm gonna start this by saying I've got a Halloween background and I feel like really Halloween-y. I was thinking about products that I don't want to buy as I was walking to the bus stop today because I went to go and get my nails done and I was thinking actually there's quite a few products that have been hyped about recently that I just don't want to buy. If you want to spend your money on it then great but personally I just wouldn't with these products. So firstly it is the Prism Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills. So basically I have the Subculture Palette by Anastasia Beverly Hills and the Modern Renaissance Palette. I love this one. This one is my holy grail of all holy grails and this one I kind of like. I reach for it sometimes but not all the time. The thing with the Prism Palette is I feel like it's a little bit of this and a little bit of this mixed into one. It's mainly subculture number two and I think if I hadn't have bought this stupidly then I probably would have got the prism palette. Oh, they've changed the formula since they released this because the backlash on this was I do feel sorry for them a little bit but I'm not being funny. It did not blend whatsoever. It's just like I have these two so I don't really need a palette of both and also it's not like the palette's like a makeup revolution one where it's like 10 quid. These retail at like £41 I think. So I just don't want another one basically. Now on to the Maybelline brow tattoo thing. What's the actual name for it? I'm gonna search the actual name. So as far as I know it is called the Maybelline tattoo brow and and the first reason why I wouldn't buy it is because Maybelline aren't a cruelty free brand. I am cruelty free and I'm in the transition to going cruelty free. But that's not the only reason because if it was then I'd be hauling non cruelty free products all day. The other reason is because I've seen a few reviews on them and it's just not really up my street. What if you do the tattoo brow and it just makes your brow look a mess? Like I know it lasts for like three days but I have stuff to do in the three days that it would last for. I just think that it's just not my kind of thing and people have found it hard to get a gradient brow with the tattoo brow. Colours are a bit off as well. I think they should have a better colour selection. It kind of caters more for darker brows which is great for me because my brows are practically black. But if you have like taupey brows, it just doesn't really cater for you. Just my personal opinion. Well, I wouldn't buy the Maybelline brow tattoo thingy majiggy ma bob. And now next on to the Urban Decay Troublemaker Mascara. This mascara, as far as I know, advertises to be sex proof. And so it must be kind of like a waterproof mascara. But they've gone the extra mile and said that it's sex proof. So obviously you do you whatever you do and your mascara stays on it's great it's a great concept i mean we all kind of like need that with our makeup does it actually work like i have watched quite a few reviews of these because i'm always on the lookout for a great mascara urban decay or a cruelty free brand it's all good however i'd say like after some of the reviews it's barely gym proof never mind sex proof i just wouldn't say that it does what it says on the tin also from the reviews it doesn't look like it makes your lashes that much longer I feel like I'm gonna check what to, what it retails at. Battery's currently dying as well, so. £19.50. £19.50 for a mascara that claims to be sex proof and it ain't and doesn't make your lashes that much longer. Yeah, it might make them a little bit longer, but I feel like there's cheaper mascaras out there, definitely. It's just not for me, basically. The next item that I definitely won't be buying is the Too Faced White Chocolate Bar Palette. Now, I have one palette by Too Faced and it is the Sweet Peach palette. I am not the biggest fan of Too Faced eyeshadows. I love Too Faced as a brand and I wish I had more products from them because there are definitely products that I would love, love, love to try. 
but from their eyeshadow point of view I'm just not the biggest fan like I've swatched the chocolate bar palettes in like Debenhams set in the scene I just feel like they're not as pigmented as other dupes are here I have my I Heart makeup chocolate bar palette and this is a dupe for the Too Faced chocolate bar this is the salted caramel one I'm not being funny but this is insanely pigmented and this retails at eight pounds to ten pounds something like that it's mega cheap it's drugstore you can buy it in super drug so watching the Too Faced chocolate bar palette in Debenhams compared to this I'd say this one was more pigmented I would love to own my own chocolate bar palette but I just feel like for the price these are so much better in relation to my sweet peach palette I feel like and I was so excited to get this and I was just so disappointed and I think that's why I wouldn't get the white chocolate bar palette either. Not only does it look a mess, that's just my personal opinion. I just don't think the colours complement each other. They are way too cool toned. Isn't it my sweet peach palette? The colours, lovely. Let me give you a little swatch. These are the three dark colours and I'm going to swatch them on my arm and like... They are quite pigmented like I'm not saying they're not pigmented when it comes to like blending it on your eye and stuff I'm just not I'm just not the biggest fan I just haven't really got on with this eyeshadow palette next up is another eyeshadow palette that I just would not get and it is the new Morphe 350 palette Morphe are basically bringing out a I would call it a sister palette to the 350 now I love my 350 I don't reach for it that much, but I still do. You know, I love it. I love the warm tones. It's so incredibly pretty. I think all the colours complement each other. The shimmers, they're just so pigmented. They blend nicely, etc. We all love the 350 palette, basically. However, Buffy have decided to bring out a new eyeshadow palette called the 3502 Second Nature Palette. And it's just like, feel like Morphe basically duped their own palette with the original colours around a bit and called it a different name. I don't see why. I love Morphe and I love their eyeshadows, but I don't see what is different from the 350 normal palette and the 3502. Set a picture of the 350 here and the 3502 here and show you what I mean because I just. I don't know, I don't see the difference personally. And then lastly is a foundation that I won't be buying. I did pick up something from the Fenty Beauty range and it was one of the highlighters. Let me just get it. I did actually do a review on this on my channel and then I deleted it because I hated it. This is the Fenty Beauty highlighter in the shade Metal Moon. A lot of people have raved over these and genuinely, I don't know why. The highlighter that I'm wearing now, this is a Makeup Revolution one that literally costs eight pounds. This retails at 26. Don't ask me what was going through my mind when I bought it. And when you swatch it, where is it? Just would not buy the Fenty Beauty foundation. I don't like the coverage of it. It's medium coverage. It's not full coverage. It's definitely a medium-ish coverage. It does oxidize. I don't like foundations that oxidize at all. It's a no-go when I'm so pale. So that is basically all the new makeup products that I won't be buying. This was basically my little anti-haul. I've never done one of these before. I don't mean to offend any of the brands or any of the products that I've mentioned. Most of the brands I love. really hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please smash it a big thumbs up. And also feel free to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And make sure you do tap the bell down below so you are notified every single time I post a new video. I do also have a vlogging channel. I will leave that up in the cards up here, as always. Or it will be in the description bar below, as will be all my social medias if you want to give them a little follow. Once again, thank you so incredibly much for watching and hopefully I'll see you on my next video. Bye!